Dad was absolutely furious because it was so embarrassing for him to rock up to work every day with a You know what will fix the, the financial crisis? Bit of Jesus. You don't have like a blindfold on and probably... <laughs> <laughs> you need a blindfold! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 282 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm joined by Rosie today. Hello. Uh, and uh, the tour starts next week in Melbourne. The Melbourne shows are sold out, but the weekend after that, we've got Geelong and Ballarat. Now, Ballarat previously, right, was selling horrifically. I've been talking about it for weeks. Wasn't selling any tickets at all. Uh, so I just decided to, to, to get honest with you guys, which I always am, you know? I'm not one of those acts that goes, oh, it's selling fast, but they're not actually, like most of these other cunts out there, that's that's how most people sell tickets. Their tickets are selling fast, and then people go, fuck, are they? And then, and then they buy, and then they sell fast. I'm telling the truth, all right? Tickets are selling fast in every city other than Ballarat, okay? Ballarat, up until now, has been a fucking disaster, and uh, was, was actually looking like a cancel, is how Ballarat was looking, okay? It was... Uh, because it's also small. Like, on paper, I have the same amount of people who live in Geelong and Ballarat who can see me. But for whatever reason, Geelong was selling great, Ballarat was selling horrifically. Okay? So I don't know what the fuck Ballarat's problem is. I assume it's them not having running water. There's probably a big problem down there in Ballarat. Okay? The only two attractions you guys have is a fucking gold mine and a medieval castle. So you guys really don't want to live in the present, okay? Which is fine, whatever, all right? That's, that's your motive. If you guys want to live, live in a time before there, were, there was anyone other than white people and, and, and when you could hit your wife and the police officer would say, well, what did she do? That's your prerogative, okay, Ballarat? And, and you know what? When I, when I come to Ballarat, I'm obviously going to live by your customs, okay? Because that's something that every tourist should do is when they're in another place that's not their own culture, they should try to, to fit in, all right, so as not to disrespect the locals. So, Rosie, you might want to wear a mouth guard. And that's not <laughs> my fault. That's Ballarat's <laughs> fault, okay? That's just how it is. You've got to partake in the culture. Now, I was very honest about Ballarat selling terribly. <laughs> So I just started saying, you know what? Some guy messaged me. He goes, yeah, hey, man, I hope you, I can't really buy a ticket because I live in America. So I'm like, no worries, dude. Just buy one anyway to see it's going to be empty. Now, I did that and he ended up buying a ticket and some guy from America bought a ticket to the fucking Ballarat show that he can't even attend. What a legend. We might FaceTime him for the show. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Do it. We'll FaceTime him for the whole show. He'll have to wake up at like 4 a.m., or something, <laughs> and someone's going to have to, we'll have to set up a little phone tripod, but we'll give it a go, all right? Now, I posted that. People thought it was funny. The post went well, uh, and now Ballarat is actually selling incredibly well. Demand for Ballarat is up 300%, according to my website. It's now, yesterday, it was the fastest selling city on the whole tour. It's gone from the, the, the most unpopular one by far, looking like a cancel, to now, it's going to be great. However, what's making me nervous is I don't know if those are ticket sales from people who live in Ballarat or just from all over the world. <laughs> I might sell a thousand tickets in Ballarat, but there might only be 15 people there. Because <laughs> before all of this, I think I'd sold 18 tickets and it was looking like a cancel. Now the venue's almost sold out, but I don't know if the venue will be sold out. I just know that there, there won't be any tickets left. So I don't know if 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 when I, I'm going to get to Ballarat and the venue's going to be sold out, I'm going to get there and there'll be fucking two guys and a bunch of crickets in the crowd. We don't know that. But either way, I'm looking forward to it. Loosespears.com, get your tickets. Uh, if you live in Ballarat, buy tickets to the Ballarat show. If you don't live in Ballarat, apparently that's not a boundary either. You can also get a <laughs> ticket to the Ballarat show. But I would much prefer to have actual people there instead of performing to a bunch of chairs, like rocking up and, and, and making money but, but feeling really sad about it is, <laughs> is how that would go. Um, Brisbane just sold out again. We have added a fourth show. Uh, the third Melbourne show is almost sold out as well. Uh, 
I don't know. Every single show is pretty much either sold out and we've added a show or selling out. So thank you very much. Loosebeers.com. We'll see you there. Um, starts next week. I have a, I have a letter here. I have a letter that was dropped into my mailbox. Um, this is not a joke. I have a full page handwritten letter that was dropped into my personal residential mailbox. Um, and I would like to read it to you. I haven't read it. What? Dear resident, I hope this letter finds you and your household well. My name is Barbara. I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, so Barbara struck gold here. She thought she was writing a letter to like maybe three people. She's actually written a letter to 4,000 people. So in a way, this is kind of making me believe in God or Jehovah, right? I don't know what Jehovah saw, but apparently it's very important. Who's ha- handwritten? This is not an email. This is written is it, is it copied like, or is it like actually written to you? Let's find out. The world is in turmoil, stated Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. It's got to be, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's copy-pasted because she's using a bit of white out here. So oh my God. she's made a couple spelling errors. Secretary, uh, so many wonder just what's next. Do you think it's possible to find real security? A time where the environment, health, even the economy is all fixed permanently? Is, what is she, what's, she trying, what's Barbara trying to say here? That, that God is a good economic manager? You know? You know what will fix the, the financial crisis? A bit of Jesus. You know where every margin trade pays off? Heaven. Uh, The Bible provides a reassuring answer to the question. Uh, Notice what it says in Bible, Book of Micah 4.4. They will each sit under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the mouth of Jehovah of armies has spoken. Dude, God's going to give you head under a tree? Does it actually say eat shit? No. When did I say eat shit? The mouth of Jehovah of armies has spoken. Each, <laughs> each sit. Okay, this is my fucking list playing up. Imagine if it said that in the Bible. Each sit under his vine. What kind of fucking strange religion? Hey, each sit. Micah four four. Each sit. Go over, go over to that tree and each sit. You piece of shit. That's what God would really be like. He'd be like, hey, go over there and eat some shit. I remember in primary school, uh, we paid uh, the poor kid $2 to eat some dog shit. And he did it. What? I wasn't, I, it wasn't my $2, but I watched. And it was primary school. And I now <laughs> look back on that and realise that, that was a really fucked thing to do. But he seemed happy about it because he got two bucks. And, you know, $2 back then you could buy the whole shop. So who yeah, really won? Yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for further information, please look up our website, jw.org. The online information is free. No registrations or adverts. Thanking you for your time. Have a great day from Barbara. Good on Barbara. Now, Barbara's a fucking workhorse because I remember I worked, uh, I lived in a different house in Frankston and we copped a handwritten letter there. So they're really writing this. Wow. Um, so there you go, guys. Uh, that's I bet you didn't expect that from Spearhead Sunnies. A little bit of prosthetizing. Um, does that? Wh- how do you feel about it? Does that make you feel like converting mm. to becoming a Jehovah's Witness? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I got one as well, but it wasn't like handwritten. It was like handwritten, but it was photocopied. That's l- see, like- that's lazy. That's not going to get you into the pearly gates. Using a photocopier, Barbara's really fucking working out here. All these other, all these other old bitches have worked out a. Well, maybe Barbara just doesn't know what a photocopier is. <laughs> maybe instead of being like really religious and really good at her job, she just is kind of very inefficient. And God's looking down at her like, "Come on, bitch! One let one letter every half an hour. Mm. I've got arthritis. Hurry it up! Eat shit, Barbara." <laughs> um. <laughs> I would become a Jehovah's Witness if it was if it was just like a group where you got to like witness 
bunch of cool shit. Like you just, you just walked around and you're like, oh, look at that. We're going we're gonna to go down to F1 and, and pray for a car crash. I, I would be in on that religion. Um, so I, uh, I, I think I'm going to, uh, I had to take a week off, uh, because I had to put down the family dog as we know, but I'm thinking of putting down my dog now just for fun. Cause she's annoyed me for the last time. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I've had enough and I don't think I'll need a week off, maybe a couple of days. You know, if I plan it in advance, she fucking ate my sleep apnea mask. She ate it. She Yikes. destroyed it. F- like, and now I feel horrible. Like immediately I st- she chews apart my mask and I just was like, oh, cool. So my whole, my whole week is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> my whole week is completely fucked because the dog was like, what's that? It smells like breath. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> horrible, right? So she's gone downstairs and just ripped apart the fucking thing that helps me breathe when I'm asleep. The only thing. I'm like, okay, awesome, cool. It's given me a really big reminder to how fucking sick I am. <laughs> it's, it's, I, use, I use the machine and I'm like, why am I going through all these surgeries? Why do I have all this shit in my mouth? I feel fine. I have one night without the mask and I can't even wake up and I feel like death and I can't remember things. So uh, that's, that's awesome. The dog is, is, a, is so smart that uh, she's now worked out how to misbehave. And she mm. now knows when I'm not looking and she knows roughly how she just knows how to get away with shit. Like I didn't notice her destroy the mask until it was bedtime, basically. You know, it's not like a lot of other dogs I've had where if they generally, if they do something wrong, you catch them and you go, no, mm. she has her nose. And then she's worked out. Oh, I don't get the no. If I just do it when he's not looking, if I go to the bathroom, guess who's eating cat shit. <laughs> Bobby, every fucking day I go to the, I now take her into the bathroom with me and she's a 30 kilogram dog and we have a small toilet. So she doesn't really fit because the only other option is if I go to the bathroom, she's either eating cat shit or destroying medical equipment, trying to kill me. And I'm a big believer in not using negative reinforcement. Okay. Some people yell at their dogs throw water on them, hit them, all right, to teach them things. I don't believe in that. I don't think that's the best way to get something out of your dog, or at least I used to believe that. I've never, ever used negative reinforcement. I've never hit the dog, never done anything mean to teach it a lesson. I've only ever rewarded good behaviour, and that's gotten me very far. She knows lots of tricks. She can stay. She can speak. She'll, she doesn't pull anymore. But the pulling was getting horrific, okay? She was pulling on the lead, she was crossing me, and I just couldn't get her to do anything. And I didn't want to yank on the lead, I didn't want to yell at her, I just kept trying to reward her when she was close to me. And that just wasn't working at all. No difference at all. Until one day, she walked in front of me, and because she walked in front of me, I stepped on her foot so badly that she screamed, and yelped. And since that moment, she's never pulled ever again. And I'm just like, that's not a good way to show me that I shouldn't hit you to teach you things. <laughs> it's the one thing that I've been wanting to fucking teach her. I accidentally heard her and she's like, oh, I get the message. I'm going to have to get a bat. If I wanted to stop eating the cat shit. Now, I'm not saying that you should hit your dogs. That's obviously wrong. Uh, but I, what I am saying is you might get where you want to go. But it's wrong. And I would never do it on purpose. But accidentally got a great result out of it. But don't do it. And I felt awful. Mm. But also walking her is a breeze. So I don't know. I don't know. What to, I don't know what to tell you. That's the way it is. So, yeah, I uh, I'm excited for this tour. It's going to be fun. Where we're leaving next week, we've got a full uh, like uh, crew put together. 
Uh, thanks for your support on Patreon, by the way. If you want uh, extended versions of the podcast, you can get them on Patreon. It really supports what we do. And it gives us a little budget to kind of uh, create content on the road. Because, you know, we're, we're, we're doing small shows, but we're traveling with, like, a very big crew. We've got tour manager, we've got Rosie, we're bringing on another guy, and then we've got me. Uh, and the extra guy is going to help us film vlogs and make the stand-up clips better. And... Uh, yeah, we're really going to plan out these vlogs, man. I've got a, a bunch of ideas ready, and we're also going to be like booking extra content days when we're in each city to kind of film videos or go to things for the vlog or collaborate with people. We've got a really, really awesome video coming up with a, a very, very popular OnlyFans creator, I won't say her name, uh, that I'm really excited for. I think it's going to be a sick video. Um, what else do we have? We've got... Uh, I've got a, a great stunt planned that I also can't really talk about that we're, we're spending a bit of money on, but I think it's going to pay off in a big way. Um, and uh, working on a really big thing with the Misfits as well, which might be announced by the time this, this podcast comes out, but if, in case it's not, I won't say it. So, yeah, we've got a, been a little bit quiet on, on the YouTube front, but we're working on some, some very big uh, videos, which are, which is going to be cool because all the short stuff has been going great, but all the YouTube stuff has been kind of tanking. And I think it's because I took so much time off uh, and then did like a bunch of like kind of average reaction videos for so long that people were like, ah, it's not really what I subscribe for. So views are down, but we'll, we'll bring them back up because uh, I, I, yeah, I just want to do like uh, better YouTube videos, I think is what we're going to do. Because also I couldn't fucking speak as well for a long time. I've only just worked mm -hmm. out how to speak and even then Rosie thought I was uh, that the Bible said eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's it comes it my 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 uh your ability to comprehend me really comes in waves. And that's what you can expect at the show. Is like, "Oh man, that joke is really funny. What the fuck did he say after that though?" Um so, yeah, I think uh, cuz we worked out, right? Something, I was trying to work out like, oh man, I wonder how much my speech is like negatively affecting people's ability to watch me. And I think, I think it's this, this is what I've worked out. I think that Australians can understand me. Americans are just lost because they were struggling to understand the Australian accent anyway, for some reason, but you chuck in a light lisp in there and then all of a sudden people have no idea what the fuck I'm saying. And we kind of got confirmation of this last week where we've been running ads for the tour, right? Where I just filmed a bunch of ads like, hey, Melbourne, I'm coming to your city. And I talk about the show. And uh, how ads on Facebook work is the better the video is, like the more interesting it is to watch, the cheaper that ad is because people will just watch it without really without you having to put money behind it, right? Whereas the worse a video is, the more money you have to pay Facebook because they have to force it into people's feeds when they don't want to watch it, right? So I put out, we filmed all these ads basically as soon as I could talk after the surgery, which was way too soon. I had a fucked gap. My thumb could fit in there. I had an insane lisp because I couldn't work out the metal in my mouth. And we filmed all these ads. And these ads were just not working at all. They were so expensive. They were getting no views we're like, oh my God, what's wrong with them? We need to refilm these things. Is it the subtitles? Is it what I said in them? Is it how they look? Is it the targeting that we've done in the ad programming? Anyway, we refilmed these ads last week or a couple of days ago. We started running them and they are instantly so much more effective and so much more cheap. And I think the only real difference is you can understand me. And that's it. And I think, I was like, oh, okay. That's why no fucking American is watching my videos at the moment. <laughs> they can't fucking understand me. We didn't change the ads that much. They don't look that much better. I'm not funnier in the new ones. I just have teeth that touch and I can kind of speak in a way that's, you know, you can understand me. So that's good to know, man. One place where, where so I think the teeth has negatively affected YouTube. One place where it's benefited me massively is TikTok. Because as I've said many times before on the show, TikTok is just a digital freak show. 
And right now my teeth are the main attraction, okay? I put out a fucking video just showing off my teeth moving apart from each other. It has 10 million views. Do you know how hard I had to work to get fucking half a million views on anything? That's borderline impossible to get half a mil on YouTube. On TikTok, you're just going to show off some kind of physical deformity you have and you're famous. <laughs> you know, who's that, who's that woman that got like burned all over her body and she became famous because her husband stayed with her? She missed the boat, man. She got, she got burned too early. If she got burned now, she'd be a fucking multimillionaire. She'd be the biggest person on TikTok. They love that shit. The comments aren't nice, but they love to, to watch it and like it. It's mental. That's almost bigger than Prince Philip. It's almost bigger than the... Thank God I have one video that has more than 10 million, and that's the vaccine video. I don't think that'll ever be topped. I hope to God it won't be top because I know that if I ever top the vaccine video, it'll be with something that I'm just not proud of. Like, look how fucked my mouth is. <laughs> Wasn't your biggest TikTok the one with Keelan as well for a while? Yeah, but that was funny. The yeah. one where Keelan <laughs> pretended to be a mega fan and I was telling him to fuck off and then we had a fake beef back and forth. That's mm. funny. I, at least that's comedy, you know? It was like low effort. And just a yeah. stupid thing we did in 30 seconds on the way home from a night out of karaoke. But at least it was comedy. This this other video is like, look at my fucked mouth. That's crazy, isn't it? And all these stupid cunts are going, oh, why would you do this? Why would you want a gap tooth on purpose? Like I'm one of those freaks that try to turn themselves into a lizard. You know, I really need to tattoo my eyes. And fork my tongue. And that's, I, this is why I'm saying, man, this is really how you blow up on TikTok is, is just like have some horrific physical deformity and you'll be famous. Even a mild one, like just be a dwarf and people will be like, look at that. It's a fucking freak show. You know, freak shows, they don't happen anymore because they're problematic. And I think the only difference between freak shows of the 1920s or if you go even further back to the 1800s where they were like, look, a person who isn't white. Isn't that crazy? The only difference between freak shows of the 1920s where they would just have like conjoined twins and they go, oh, look at this really fat lady. <laughs> look at this. And people are like, I didn't know a lady could get that fat. That's crazy. That's worth the price of admission. Two shillings. The only difference between a physical freak show and, and what TikTok is today is the ticket price. And I would say that the freak show is actually more progressive than TikTok because at least those freaks were getting paid, you know? 10 million views on my teeth, I didn't get a, a cent. If I was in the fucking travelling freak show, I would at least get a meal through the bars of my cage that's worth it to me. That's better than what I've done to myself. Where the most, where the, where the most engaging, talked about thing on that platform is not my comedy, but my fucked head. <laughs> but yeah, that's what's going on. Um, I have some emails here, but before I get in, before I get into that. Uh, it's time for Manscaped. I'm way ahead of you, Rosie. Rosie's okay. flashing up Manscaped signs. <laughs> I'm all over it. I know what I'm doing, okay? Manscaped.com. If your dog has eaten your, your sleep apnea mask and you need to shave bad girl into her, Manscaped.com. I would never. <laughs> but did I think about it? The answer is yes. One time I remember this um, – this, fucking hilarious memory of my, my old dog that we just lost. I just remembered this and I, it's so funny. She was a work dog. She went to mm. work with dad. He's a carpenter. So he's like always around other builders. He shopped to a building site with the dog. One time me and my brother, when we were much younger, we uh, with permanent marker drew angry eyebrows on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and dad was furious he was so upset. He tried to wash them off. They didn't come off. 
and then he had to take the fucking dog every day for about three weeks to work and everyone would laugh at the dog with angry eyebrows and she loved it because she was just getting extra attention, had no idea why. But dad was absolutely fucking furious because it was so embarrassing for him to rock up to work every day with a dog that had angry eyebrows. And with Manscaped.com, you could shave angry eyebrows into your dog. I wouldn't recommend that. I would, however, recommend uh, maybe giving your, your cock and balls angry eyebrows if you wanted to, you know. That would be a nice surprise for the missus. <laughs> you could do it. The Lawnmower 4.0 is so precise and it doesn't nick or cut you that you could give, give yourself a fade, man. How about that? You know how people are, are putting slits into their eyebrows now? A lot of girls mm. think that's really hot. How mm. about this? A slit in your ball bag. That could be good. Ladies, a slit for your slit. <laughs> Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0. They've got a bunch of other uh, personal grooming products that I use regularly and I highly recommend. Uh, and it's, you know, they've got everything nose hair trimmers. Ear hair trimmers, they got fucking nail care kits, travel things that I bring on tour with me. They've even got ball deodorant, which I'm yet to use, but I'll give it a go at some time. It's 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 every time I open up my uh, my cabinet in the bathroom, it's it's staring at me like, go on, give me a whirl, and one day I will. And you know what? If you're lucky enough, I might even give you a whiff on tour. That's a lie. No one no one asked to sniff my balls on tour. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping, the Lawnmower 4.0. Um, right, now, it's a little bit early for emails, I will say, but I got so many good ones recently that I just have to do it, okay? Miscellaneous bit at the end, it's the worst part of the podcast, it's where I answer your life advice questions or read out your stories. If you If you have a question for me, if you have a dilemma, if you have a story from your life that you think would be amusing that could make the show, send it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. That's podcast at loosebeers.com. Don't fucking ask me what the email is because if you know there's an email segment, you've heard me say it because I say it every time and every fucking week because someone goes, what's the email to the show? And I say, if you know that there's an email segment, you've heard me say the email. So if you've forgotten it, you have a small brain and you don't deserve to know. I don't want to read your email. Podcast at loosebeers.com. Send it through. Okay. So what do we have here? <clears throat> Looking for dating advice. Hey, Lewis. I'm from Canada uh, and I'm seeing this guy. Uh, oh, Gay dating advice. Here we go. I'll try my best. I'm from Canada and I'm seeing this guy who is from a pretty fucked area. It's up north, uh, the Frankston of Canada. Uh, super depressing place to live, rampant alcoholism, drug abuse, etc. He drinks and I do not. I don't think I've ever met a sober gay. Have you ever met a sober gay? I don't think so. Me neither. Interesting. Cool. Good on you. I tell you what, it's pretty fucking gay, but good on you. Um, I don't drink at all. None of my friends get drunk. I don't go to bars. Man, this is going to be the most boring gay in Canada. This sounds like you, Lewis. Hey! <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 if I was in Canada, I would be the most boring gay in Canada. Uh, I really like this guy, and I want to learn how to hang with the boys. Do you have any advice for being the sober person around drunk people or dating someone with different substance habits than you? Um, this is a great question for me because Jazz loves a bit of meth. I don't expect him to change his consumption of alcohol for me. If he does, that will be a choice he makes for himself. Yeah, look, this is uh, honestly, uh, as a sober person, I've never drunk and I obviously I live in Australia, which has a very big binge drinking culture and everybody drinks. I'm the only sober person that I know, other than my girl. Um, it's not a big deal at all. Like, you're kind of overthinking it. I think that 
It actually it depends how old you are. If you're like 16 to, to 20, it's kind of a big deal. And that's, in my experience, mostly due to the people around you. In my experience, being a sober person growing up where people were starting to drink and, and parties and bars and binge drinking was starting, the biggest problem I ever got was from people being self-conscious around me, like thinking that I would think less of them because they were drinking in front of me, like thinking that I didn't drink because I thought it was a bad thing to do for everybody, Um, which I just don't, I just don't, my personal reason is I don't have any interest in it. I'm not excited by it. And I think it's going to hold me back. Uh, And also I know that every person who's older than me, more successful or less successful goes, Oh yeah, you're doing the right thing. And all I see from people older than me is them trying to quit and failing because it's really fucking hard. So my reasoning for not drinking is I don't see the appeal in it. I don't feel like I'm missing out on things. And I feel like if I were to start, I would just end up quitting anyway. So I'm just going to skip that. Um, If people drink around me, I don't care. As long as they're not harming themselves or other people, I have no opinion on it, opinion on it really. Um, And the only time I ever, I, I got a lot of negativity, but it was always from people who drunk, who, felt self-conscious around me, like I would be judging them, Uh, which I don't think was uh, something that I put out there. I don't think I genuinely don't think that I judge, like, you know, like I fucking live in Frankston. Like I see the shit all the time and I don't think it's good, but I'm not like, oh, you shouldn't do that because people make their own choices. So I think that if you're young, it does feel like a much bigger deal than it is. But once you hit like 20, and also once people just work out that you just don't drink and you can't be convinced as well, that's another thing is like, you know, I'd be like, oh, I don't drink. And there'd be a lot of peer pressure. I'm like, come on, try. Oh, dude, you haven't even have had one. Man, I'm going to I'm gonna be the person who gets you drunk. Oh, dude, you would be so funny if you were high. Like all of that shit. Like, oh, man, I wonder what Lewis would be like if he was high. Like all of that fucking shit. That goes away after like three times of you going out with that person or that group. If you can just say no, like three or four times, and then they're just like, they'll just stop offering. And then it doesn't even become a thing anymore. I don't get, unless I've, it's a person that I've just met, I do not get offered alcohol anymore because everyone just knows in my life that I don't and that I will not change. So it just becomes like something that's not even discussed. If that isn't true for you, you're hanging around the wrong people, right? If like after five times you're going, I don't drink, I don't drink, I don't drink, they're still pushing on you, uh, I wouldn't hang out with those, those people anymore because they're just going to probably drag you down and try and ruin your life, <laughs> basically. Um, but yeah, in terms of like, uh, do you have any advice for being the sober person around drunk people? Yeah, don't be a cunt. Like don't judge people if when people ask you why you drink you don't have to give them a big spiel you're gonna say ah, it's not for me uh dating someone with different substance happens than you jazz used to drink uh and that was years and years ago because she she decided to stop drinking which i think was definitely better for our relationship because you know sometimes she would be like oh i just feel weird like getting drunk around you or I feel like you're not having as much fun if you have to look after me um which I suppose is kind of true sometimes it was sometimes it wasn't uh I would say that it's yeah it's a little bit more difficult when when someone does do something that you don't right but it's also not the end of the world you know uh I never really thought about like, oh, this is fucked that she drinks or I don't want to be with someone who drinks. It was just something that wasn't for me. I wouldn't want to be with a problem drinker for sure, but someone leisurely drinking, I can be, that's that's all my friends. Uh, So I can be friends with those people. I think you might be overthinking it, maybe. It's kind of what I think. But I'm not a sober gay. I'm just a sober straight. Any thoughts? Um, As an alcoholic gay, Rosie? 
As an alcoholic gay, what do I think? Uh, I agree with what Lewis said. I think it's it's not a big deal unless it does start to impact your relationship in a negative way. Yeah. But even like like social hangouts, like going out with the boys or whatever, you don't have to drink. No. And like you, think no, you, you kind of just like have fun. So. Yeah. Yeah. People think. Uh I don't know. A lot, a lot of people, a lot of people can't even comprehend the idea of them having fun without drinking uh, as an adult. But a lot of those people haven't really tried it as well, and that's why they can't comprehend it. Like I can't really comprehend having fun drunk because I've never tried that. I'm sure that it would be fun and it would happen for me if I were to drink, drink, but I can't really like think or picture of what that would be like or what I would do if I were to drink. So the opposite is true for most other people. So usually, yeah, the biggest problem uh, with not drinking is self-conscious drinkers around you, in my experience. Um, so yeah, I would say just, this, you're overthinking it. There's, there's really nothing to do. Just don't be a cunt and you'll be fine. Um, now I've got this email, all right? This one's a banger, okay? Wife wants me to pimp myself out to an old guy. Nice. Hey, cunt. I've been a huge fan for years from over in the UK. Oh, mate. UK? Grab tickets to Ballarat. I watch all of your <laughs> YouTube podcasts stand up and even listen to the podcast you did with that Luke bloke. You ever tour the UK? Me and my mates will be there. I will. Uh, I hope to maybe do UK shows next year. No promises. But if not next year, definitely the year after. Um, I definitely want to go there soon. Um Okay, uh, really sorry to hear about your dog. Listening to your pod on site at work. I'm a six foot six builder tearing up in front of the guys. So thanks for that. Oh, thanks, mate. Um, anyway, I don't have a question as this happened a few months back, but I wondered what you would have done in this situation and your thoughts. Um, would I have fucked an old man? Let's see. I'm self-employed general builder doing well. I have an awesome wife, bought the house and life was good. Uh, then COVID came and fucked me. Dude, same. I couldn't work at some times and loads of jobs were being cancelled. Wouldn't have been so bad, but I'd spent loads of money on a holiday, car, etc. based uh, on getting money from all the cancelled jobs. Dumb cunt, I know. Yeah, but also who could have seen that coming? So get to now and I'm stressing. I'm behind on the mortgage payments, credit card debt. Work has picked up again, but basically uh, I'm... Uh, 5,000 pounds, 8,500 AUD short, and I'm going to lose the house. Fuck. I get booked in for a week's work, just some repair work for an old customer I've known since I started years ago. This guy is as rich as Bruce Wayne. His house is like a stately old mansion, something out of a Downton Abbey. He's also gay as fuck. Like old school gay flamboyant, every sentence is an innuendo, a TV stereotype of how people used to portray gay guys. I love those dudes. They're fun. Never bothered me. I would banter with him. I'm just doing my job. We're chatting here and there. His husband had passed a couple of years back, told me that he's a sad old queen alone in this big house. I must have mentioned my debts at some point and how lockdown had fucked me over. Here we go. So the second to last day, he starts talking to me, but really serious, not in his usual joking way. He told me that he would pay off all my debt if after my shift, uh, I would let him watch me shower, get naked on his massage table, let him touch me and suck me off. <laughs> I tried to laugh it off as, as if he was joking, but he was dead serious. I have a great body. I'm all trimmed and tidy. Thanks to Manscaped 4.0. Use code SPEARS. I love it. Uh, so I don't blame him. I told him thanks for the offer, but I'm happily married and I'm not into old gay guys. Well, that evening, I tell my wife about his offer, thinking that she would find it funny. But she told me I had to do it. <laughs> to save our house, clear debts and take one for the team. I told her I sure as fuck am not uh, taking anything, but I'll think about it. What would you do in this situation? Would it be financially responsible? <laughs> this is such a homeowner email. Is it financially responsible to get to let a gay man take advantage of me? 
Would it make you gay or bi? And what if you enjoyed it too much? Would love to know your thoughts. Anyway, got to say, life's been going great again now. Massive relief to not be in debt anymore. Oh, so you did it? Thanks for reading. All the best. Hope to see you here in the UK soon. So this guy did it or what? I think so. Mike. Chase the bag by any means. I don't know. Eight and a half grand to let an old old man watch me shower, give me a massage and suck me off. Hmm. You know what? If I really needed the money, I'd do the shower. <laughs> I'd do the shower. But I would want to, I would want, you know what? Here's my problem with this is that I would, and you're a contractor, okay? As a person, I bill my services, okay? You know, so I know what I'm worth. It costs, it costs this much for Manscaped to do an ad read on the podcast. But if you want to get on my YouTube channel, it's going to cost you more. And if you wanted me to perform in Melbourne, that'll cost you some money. But if you wanted me to fly out and perform at a birthday party, that's going to cost you more money. My problem with the eight and a half thousand dollars for the shower, the massage, and the blowjob is it's all lumped in. You got to separate those things. Okay. I remember when I did an ad read for Logitech. Okay. We charged them one fee for me for to film the ad. Then we charged them another fee to put the ad in the Australian market. And then they wanted to put the ad in Germany and other European countries. So we were like, well, that's an extra thing. That's going to cost you more. Now, I didn't make too much money out of filming the ad. I made a little bit of money out of having the ad in Australia and New Zealand. What I'm saying, Mike, is my Germany, Europe, Europe trip, Europe exposure that's your blowjob, okay? That's going to cost you more. I would say I would price the shower. I'm pricing the shower at, at, at five, I think. That's my, that's if, if I'm in trouble, if I'm doing well, another, another story. But if I really need 10 grand or I lose my house, and my wife is telling me to go out there and get it. A shower is going to cost you five. The massage. Now, this isn't a normal massage, is it? Right? If it was a normal massage, two. But this is a gay old man naked massage. So that's going to come with a premium. And that's really, if I really, really need the money, and it's just a naked massage. So no hand job, no blow job. Just like a just a, a, a little um excursion of my manscaped body. That's gonna cost you one that's gonna cost you seven. So so now before blow job, I'm looking at what? That's twelve grand? Pretty good. That's pretty good. And that's that's where I'd check out. Because I've got my 12 and I'm unsucked. Now, let's say my roof collapses. <laughs> I don't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I don't think I could do it for any money. I think I would just, I would look at my wife and, and I'd say, you, you don't know who I am. That's what I would say. If you think that I'm going to let some gay dude suck me off, you know what? I'd do another shower. I'd come back in another month and go, because here's the, here's the real smart play is, and this is what these OnlyFans girls are so good at. The minute these OnlyFans girls show some pussy, they can't go back to, to showing, you know, covering up their nipples. They can't do that. A lot of these OnlyFans girls, they'll take sexy photos, but they won't even show nipple. They're always wearing underwear. Because they know the minute they show off some pussy, everyone's like, I don't need to see nipple anymore. I've, I've seen God. And, you, and if you go back to covering up pussy, people are going to be disappointed. You know, people want more. And if you go to this point, 
they're not going to be interested in 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 the intro anymore. So what I would do is I would go shower, and then this is his real play. I would I would charge money for the shower, and then you go. That's all I'm doing though. That's all I'm going to do. And you give him the shower. You get your money, and then you wait for him to reach out next month. He's really horny. He's really desperate. He he maybe he made a bit more money. Whatever he's doing, and he's like, fine. He's like, please, please. I want to. I want to. I want to watch you shower, give you a massage, and then suck you off. And you go, look, man, the shower was fine, but I'm not gay. All right, I can't do it for that amount of money. I'm sorry. And he's gonna go, please, and he's gonna offer you more. And he go, you know what? Fine, but I'm not doing the blowjob. Only the massage and the shower. And you go there and you double your money, and you get your massage and and your shower. And then you go, that's it though. That's all I'm doing. And you just keep doing that. Mm-hmm. You never work your way up to blowjob. You got to take a leaf out of these OnlyFans girls' books. They know what they're doing. I guarantee you, if I pulled my cock out on the podcast, you'd probably be less interested in in jokes because you'd be like, "Wait, is this guy like a a sex worker? Like, I don't like, I don't I don't think I can get around this guy anymore if he's pulling his dick out. You you would just be less interested. I'm not saying you would be more interested in more penis. I think you would just be like, "Well, I've seen everything. I'm 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 done." You know, jackass, for example. Once they started sticking things in each other's asses, it was like, all right, well, where the fuck do they go from here? And that's how you got to look at sex work. In, you got you to do it in installments. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Rosie? A crotchety old gay woman. Um, You're doing some video editing for her. Well, and she was going to give me like almost 10 grand. 10 grand for a, for a shower, a massage and a happy ending. If I was like and really, you needed the money. If I was really broke and like Cam was just like, oh yeah, I think you should do it. You've had like a blindfold on and probably <laughs> <laughs> you need a blindfold. <laughs> I don't know. But if I was like really desperate, yeah. I probably would do it. <laughs> okay. See? And it and this is why you go all three. You wouldn't stop. I, I can't do the blowjob. I couldn't do it. Not even for like what ten grand. I th- I think I would ra- I think I would rather lose the house. Oh. And 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 then I would tell people that I chose to lose it, and people would go. Some people would go. Oh, what if we just put a blindfold on? But other people would go. Nah, that's. I'm just so straight. I'm like so incredibly straight. A lot of people are like, oh, there's a little bit. You know, this guy's like, would this make you gay? A little bit. Mm. It, I'll, I'll say this. There's something undeniably gay about having sex with a man. It strikes me as a little bit gay is all I'll say. But that's you know that's how that's how we're different. I think there's other ways. There's other shameful ways to make ten grand. I think. Mm, yeah, I I feel like I wouldn't have a problem with it. I feel like <laughs> ten grand is ten grand. Like <laughs> pay like my rent for the whole year. Yeah, that's true. It is you know what each to their own, and it seems like Mike. Are you allowed to add his name on the podcast? He's written Mike. That's what he wrote. So, you know, I'm Ron Burgundy. If you write it, I'll read it. Um, life's going great again now. Massive relief to not be in debt anymore. So, good on you. <laughs> I guess he's done it. You know what? Bright side of the, of the story, at least you have a supportive wife. Yeah. There you go. I love this podcast. Should I let an old man suck me off? Uh, your, your answer is irrelevant. I've already done it. <laughs> okay. And the final one before we end the show here and, and start the Patreon version. Uh, turned a girl gay. Nice. Hey, Lewis. I would just like some life advice. 
I've been chatting with a girl for a couple of weeks uh, and I had a date planned for the coming week uh, when both of us are off uni and work. The conversations are really good and mutual friends have let me know that she's really interested in me. A couple of days go by, the vibe completely shifts. Straight away I know that something, something is up. I find out through the same mutual that she's gay as hell and doesn't want a relationship, uh, which isn't a huge surprise as I knew she was bi and so am I. Should I talk to her about not having the conversation about... Should I talk to her about not having the conversation about this with me first and instead of in front of all of my friends? Or should I look into gender reassignment surgery? Right, so you're talking to a girl and then she tells your friends that she's gay now. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, you should talk to her. Mm, no yeah, brainer. I think so. You don't even have to ask her if she's gay. Just ask her, hey, uh, are, we a, are we a thing? I really like you. Do you feel the same way? And she'll answer the question. Yeah, if not, you can be friends. Yeah, that's what I think. I feel like uh, I haven't had the experience of a, of a woman turning gay in a relationship with me. Although, although every now and then I see what Jazz is wearing and I go, I think I'm living with a lesbian. <laughs> is that funny? No. She owns six pairs of Doc Martens. She's a fucking lesbian. I don't know why she's with me. Um, I own three. Well, and and there you, there you go. See, there's your answer about that's that's why you would probably take the deal. <laughs> See what I mean? That's the the ultimate tell with the girl is how many pairs of Doc Martens does she own? And you know that's how gay she is. My girlfriend owns six owns six pairs, so I'm lucky to be around. Rosie only owns three, so she might take a deal from an old rich woman. If you know a girl who only owns one, she probably just thought they looked cool and bought some bought, bought a pair. Mm. And that's how you tell. That's that's the spectrum of of uh, of a woman's sexuality as told through what shoes she owns. If all she owns are some volleys, that is a lesbian. <laughs> that is a fucking lesbian. If she only owns volleys, she can fucking run. She she looks at a pair of high heels and goes, why would I want to wear those? Can't wrestle in them. If she owns volleys and a couple of polo shirts, dude, that's the gayest woman on earth. <laughs> if she owns a denim vest, that is a lesbian. So that's my advice is I'm going to change my answer is don't even ask her. Just go, hey, how many pairs of Doc Martens do you have? And if it's if it's over one but under three, she, she might be by and you've got a shot. If she owns more than three, a high, high chance you're dealing with a lesbian. If she owns only volleys, don't even bother about being her friend. She wants nothing to do with you. Um, and that's where I'm going to leave it. That's the end of the show. Thank you very much for watching. If you want more podcast, uh, it happens every single uh, Sunday uh, or earlier than that, actually, on Patreon. In fact, I have a little snippet of this week's Patreon episode. Here it is. Out now on Patreon. I think I've solved the mystery of who sent us the letter. Just saying that it looks a little bit suspect, Dan. Dan, hold it tighter. She's a fighter, Schneider. That's so fucked. Because I was never, when I went to the call centre, at any of them, I was never an arsehole. But absolutely, I did the bare minimum. Fuck yeah. That was a snippet from the exclusive Patreon episode. It is up right now. It's a banger and I want you to see it. Check it out on patreon.com slash spears. Your support helps us keep the show running and helps us make all of this content that we're putting out there for you. And you get early access to the main episode of the podcast, plus the exclusive and the Discord server as well. Great little community uh, that's in there and it's growing and we really want you to join it. So thank you for your support. I'll see you on tour, loosebears.com. Tickets are selling fast for every city now. I can't fucking believe it. Ballarat might actually fill out. Thank you. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Sunday? Sunday? Subway. Have a shit one. Subway.